All right, back in 1985, I moved to Juneau, Alaska, and it was one of my favorite places on earth, and I wanted to talk about it. So, uh, just the bare details. I moved to Alaska in September of 1985, and I left Alaska the 1st of June of 1987. So nearly two years of living in Alaska and some of my most deep thinking and revelations uh, happened when I lived in Alaska because I had a lot of time to myself. But I didn't move to Alaska by myself. Um, I was seeing Rhonda when I got the uh, job offer to come to Alaska and I can't remember if I took the job before discussing it with Rhonda or if we discussed it and I decided to take the job and we agreed that she would move up. I'm not sure if she do, agreed to move up because I was going to take the job whether she wanted to or not. Or I can't remember how, I actually can't remember. But you know, the we didn't want to break up and I was moving to Alaska, that much I do remember. And um, so yeah, we did. and. But she was 18 at the time. I was 23, and uh, we had um, never, obviously, either one of us lived in a romantic way, you know, out on our own um, before. So it was uncharted territory for us. And sadly, for me, uh, Rhonda didn't like it in Alaska. Um, she at first had a hard time finding a job she she wanted and she ended up taking a job at a fast food place uh, where she felt she couldn't relate to any of the other people who were working there so she felt quite alone and estranged of course because I was at work you know eight nine hours a day and um, so she spent a lot of time by herself with no support network at all so she ended up moving back to California in December and you know there's obviously a lot more to it that I could talk about but while Rhonda still lived there uh, for the very first time in my life um, a dream of mine came true and and that was to see the Aurora Borealis I can't even remember how we found out that they were in the sky but um, it was like I think something stupid like one o'clock in the morning and we went outside I think wearing bathrobes and maybe some slippers maybe not even slippers and it was freezing outside um, <clears throat> you know that Rhonda lived there in the autumn the whole time so it was always cold when she lived there and or wet um, anyway uh, we lived at the bottom of Mount Juno right in in on the hills just just above ta up, 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 above town and um, there was like a, a semi halo of a curtain of sort of green and purplish light hanging in the sky and we both just stood there looking at it going uh, 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 and then it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger like that and which had the optical illusion of making it look like it was coming closer and closer and closer to us and then it just sort of dissipated and went away and it was gone just, just as fast as it got there it was really really intense and uh, I never thought I'd uh, see that and I did see it when I lived in Alaska quite a few times um, <clears throat> and in fact I'm just gonna go straight to talking about that before I pick up chronologically one time I was on the radio uh, it was I was on at that time from 7 in the evening until midnight and I got a call from one of my listeners saying you know the Aurora Borealis is amazing tonight you should have a look and so I put on a long song and I went downstairs and went out to the parking lot and it was like way below freezing and I looked up and literally the whole sky was curtains of green dancing in various different ways I mean there's like separate arrangements of all the I, I've never seen the Aurora take up the whole sky except for that one night and it was literally the whole sky was moving you couldn't even see the stars. The sky was clear everywhere, but you couldn't see the stars because there were so many different curtains of light doing their thing. And uh, yeah, 
um, there was me and my uh, best buddy in Alaska, Kevin. Um, we were standing there. Uh, we put on a really long song. We put on the long version of uh, uh, a Sheila E song, if I recall, which was like 12 minutes long. You know, we went downstairs and we're out there howling at the lights. Uh, we had this uh, illusion that we could make the lights move if you, if you howled at them, right? Which, of course, the lights are going to move anyways, right? <laughs> anyways, there was this uh, overlapping curtain of lights. It was like a green row, then an overlapping purple row, and an overlapping green row like that. And they were sort of waving like this in a very gentle way, but you, you know, gently but quickly. Like, you, you got to see the aurora to know what I mean. I mean, it's amazing how graceful they can move around, you know, like... It's like smoke almost. It's amazing. Anyway, uh, they, they were doing this thing where they were just like going very gently back and forth like that. This sort of green, purple, green, purple. And then all of a sudden they went, kajang, 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 like that. And uh, me and Kevin, who had our arm around each other, right, because we're freezing. And we both went, whoa, like that. And we both fell over backwards on our ass. That was a load of fun. And that's, uh, that's two things that happened to me. The first time I saw the Aurora with Rhonda, it literally took my breath away. I could not breathe. I just stood there looking at it going, ah. <laughs> and then with Kevin, um, it was so awesome. It literally knocked me on my ass. It literally knocked me over. <laughs> uh, you know, this, this is one of the reasons that Alaska is sort of reverential in my memory. Um, you know, it was a really big deal for me. Now, getting back to the chronological, um, Rhonda had moved away and I was devastated. You know, I, it made me question everything that I thought I knew about myself and about life. And I went through all of this sort of existential panic and I, I went into, uh, I really needed to do something to sort of keep myself from falling into depression. So I bought myself a 35 millimeter camera and decided to become a sort of nature photographer and just take some sort of arty farty photographs of. Alaska, you know, because I did think it was extremely majestic and beautiful. And uh, that's what I did. And because I bought my camera, I got into hiking. I got into hiking up the mountains. I climbed Mount Roberts quite a lot. Um, and I've also climbed Mount Jumbo. I think I climbed uh, Mount Mendenhall. I think that's the name of it as well. It's whichever one, it's the, the, the tallest one that you can climb in the Juneau vicinity. It's like 5,200 feet from sea level to the top and since you start at sea level that is a uh, pretty pretty big climb the last thousand feet or so are pretty much close to straight up I mean you're literally crawling on all fours up the side of this fucking mountain um, to get to the top loads of fun so yeah uh, I bought my camera and because I tried to become sort of this arty farty nature photographer um, I got into sort of exploring and and uh, <clears throat> taking a lot of pictures and that also took me to the tops of all the uh, climbable mountains. Um, I think actually you can climb Mount Juno, but I heard the trail was a bit treacherous, so I decided to not try that one. Um, there's another climbing story, though. One time I decided to climb up the other side of Mount Juno to the reservoir there is uh, near the top of the mountain. And this is in April of 1986. And uh, I had a... Uh, a young listener, he's like eight or nine years old, as I recall, uh, who kind of idolized me, and he had I had invited him to come and visit me and watch me on the air, um, and he, you know he came in with his dad to the station and I showed them around and I let him do the controls and everything like that, and uh, yeah, it was a gas. Anyway, I ran into him and his dad. Uh, they were coming down the mountain as I was going up the mountain, <laughs> and um, dad had a rifle, and the boy, who was like I say, about nine. He had a pistol in his hand, and I'm like, hey guys, how you doing? And they stopped to talk to me for a minute, and uh, I said, what do you got guns for? And they're like, well, why don't you have a gun? I'm like, well, I'm just hiking up to the top of the reservoir. And he goes, yeah, but why don't you have a gun? I'm like, no. And he says, Paul, the bears will be coming out of hibernation, and they'll be really hungry, man. You should have a gun. And I'm like, oh man, I'm not going to see any bears, and if I do, the last thing I want to do is shoot one. You know, you got to shoot a bear square between the eyes if it's going to die. Otherwise, you, that bear is going to fuck you up. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't even want to. I don't even want to tempt a bear. I'd rather just like play dead and hope for the best. You know. Having said that, I just saw the Revenant 
oh my god, the guy got Leonardo DiCaprio gets mauled by a bear in the movie, and it was like watching one of my biggest nightmares come true. It was horrifying. Oh my god, I would never want that to happen. Anyway, back to my story. Um, so I said goodbye to the dad and his boy, and uh, after they walked away, I sort of walked another couple hundred yards, and I'm thinking, hmm, I'm not so sure if this is such a good idea. And uh, I walked another couple hundred yards, and I came across a great big steaming mound of bear shit. And I thought it was time to go the other direction and get back down to the bottom of the mountain. <clears throat> I suppose I should talk about Mount Jumbo as well. Um, I climbed Mount Jumbo with uh, my friend Lauren, who didn't live with me at the time, but later on became one of my roommates, and uh, my other friend Dave. And uh, we had uh, a lot of sort of, uh, you know, male banter going up the mountain. You know, we were all being sort of, oh, we're, we're going to take on this mountain, we're going to conquer this mountain and shit. And by the time we got to the top of that mountain, man, the, mo the mountain had conquered us. We were fucking wiped the fuck out. And then you realize that you got to climb all the way back down, which is, uh, you know, your legs are already screaming for mercy and everything like that. But anyways, um, when we had the peak of the mountain in sight, this is Mount Jumbo, um, which is on the island of Douglas. And uh, yeah, we, we, got, we, we saw that the, and my friend Lauren started to race off and go ahead of us. And I'm like, whoa, 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 dude, we should make an effort to, you know, we, we've come all this way together, you know, we should arrive at the same time. This shouldn't be a race to the top. And he's like, fuck that, man, I want to be there first. And I'm like, come on, man, let's just chill. And so we basically agreed to walk up there together and we walked in lockstep, uh, the three of us, like, you know, right next to each other and got to the top. And then we both, well, all three of us stood with our backs to each other and, um, we're looking at a different vista from the top of the mountain and none of us could see each other's faces and all three of us said at the same time man this is what it's all about and that was kind of cool because I've, I've had that happen with, with one other person uh, but usually you can see each other's faces and this time we couldn't see each other's faces and we all said the exact same thing at the exact same time with almost the same inflection it was kind of cool actually it was it was magnificent at the time so yeah, and the spectacle of being able to see from that from that altitude, you can see over the top of the uh, of Mount Juno and over the, into the ice fields and shit. It's pretty cool. So yeah, um, Mount Jumbo was probably my favorite mountain that I've ever climbed in my life. Now, <clears throat> onto my social life. You know, in uh, 1986, I thought I had broken up with Rhonda around about Valentine's Day, but apparently she didn't think we broke up until April. So there was like a two month period where I was. I thought I was a free person and uh, I didn't do anything with anybody or anything like that but I didn't even realize that Rhonda thought we were still a couple until we had a conversation about it in 2008 when I was visiting California and I'm like no no we broke up at just around Valentine's Day and she's like no we didn't we didn't break up until after I left I came up she came back up to visit me in in April and apparently she was coming back up to, uh, to see if I wanted her to stay. And I didn't realize that's why she was coming back up. I thought she was coming back up to get the stuff that she left behind and go back to California with it. Because she left like her VCR and some other stuff. I can't even remember what else now. And um, I thought she just came back to get her stuff, man. I didn't realize she was going to move. Uh, I, I just... I just ugh. I'll make a whole separate video about Rhonda. And, but anyway... Um, so yeah, I had, I had started to, I decided, you know, what am I going to do? You know, and I decided to take up clubbing again because, you know, when I was younger, I used to do a lot of clubbing because I worked in a nightclub. So anyway, um, I, in Juno, I don't know what it might be called now or if it still exists, but at the time, this is the middle of the eighties, there was this nightclub called the Penthouse. Um, it was the top, at the top of like a shopping center or maybe it was a hotel or both. I can't remember. Uh, but it was pretty much in the center of town, and it was very sort of much a yuppie bar with a dress code, and it was very trendy. And the um, funny thing about that is, <clears throat> you know, I've always, uh, you know, in the 80s especially, in the early 80s, I was one of those pretty boys with all these kind of weird haircuts and sometimes more makeup and all that kind of stuff. And, um, but it, by the middle of the 80s, I was, I was, my image had, had sort of, I, I'd modified it to be something a bit more sort of, I don't know. Uh, so, sort of aspiring rock star maybe I'm not sure really what, what, where my head was at at the time but 
you know, I was a DJ and I wanted to be like Mr. Cool, I suppose. Let's put it that way. And uh, so, yeah, <laughs> um, I used to go clubbing at the penthouse and I, even though it was a bit of a yuppie bar and I was a bit of a sort of, you know, trendy dude, um, I would dance there uh, without my shoes on. I would always take my shoes off and dance in my socks. And, you know, sometimes the uh, the management or the bar, you know, the bouncers would call me up on it. I'm like, dude, it's fine. You know, I'll be, I'll be careful where I walk, you know. And in that bar, you couldn't have uh, d drinks on the dance floor anyway. So the dance floor wasn't wet or likely to be covered in broken glass or anything like that. So anyway, they let me get away with it. And that's the only place in my life that I've ever been dancing where I went dancing in public without my shoes on. Uh, I'm not even sure I could, could feel comfortable doing that now. But uh, this is when I was like 23, 24. Um, and yeah, I, <laughs> that's what I used to do. I used to go dancing in my socks. And uh, yeah, back in the, in the 80s, of course, I was in my 20s and I was certainly ready to meet Miss Wright. I always wanted to start a family when I was young. And for me, the clock was ticking. And uh, not least because dear little mom, did, she did uh, occasionally sort of drop a lot of hints that she was, you know, anxious to start being a grandmother and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and while I lived in Alaska, my sister had her first kid. Uh, my niece Jessica and um, I was like all jealous and shit that Kelly had a kid first <laughs> <coughs> you know I was proud of her though man you know my sister is fucking amazing but it's just like oh wow I always thought I was gonna have a kid first you know it's just like wow <clears throat> but no I didn't have a kid for years after that anyway um yeah so uh, where was I? Alaska, right. Um, <laughs> sorry, I really went off on one. The penthouse was lots of fun. I did meet some people there, but I never pulled in the penthouse, not even once. Um, and in Alaska, I did uh, I, I did sort of set about trying to meet someone that I might be, hopefully, if I was going to stay there and you know make a Juno my home forever, then I have to meet someone and decide to put my roots down. Or was I going to be a radio gypsy and try to keep on moving up into greater markets? I hadn't really made up my mind, but I thought, well, I'm here. I might as well, you know, shop around. So I dated a lot, uh, but nothing was ever really serious, and I didn't have any sexual partners. Uh, I just dated, you know, a lot. Um, and that was, uh, the, the, you know, it was one of the reasons that I eventually left in uh, 1987 was because I realized that I was uh, that basically the ratio of men to women in any town in Alaska is uh, lopsided in favor of men. There's always way more men than there are women in any given town in Alaska and some towns I think the ratio is like 10 single men for every single woman or something like that. <clears throat> and um, it's got to be tough to be a chick in that town boy. But anyway, uh, in Juneau, um, the ratio is not quite as bad as that, not by a long, long way, but it's still pretty bad. And I sort of realized that, you know, um, I wasn't going to meet the person I was hoping to meet uh, living in Alaska. But I did have some great times. Some of my friends from California came up to visit. Berkeley came to visit. Uh, my friend Darlene, who I used to go out with in 1982, uh, she came up to see me. She was supposed to stay for two weeks, but she only stayed for three days or four days because she hated the weather because it was raining in the middle of summer. And it's kind of funny because literally the day after she left, the sun came out and it was sunny for a whole week. <laughs> but, uh, you know, que sera, sera, right? And uh, one of my exes, or I suppose, yeah, I suppose she was one of my exes at the time, uh, Cindy, she came up to see me in the summer of 1986. And... Um, based on that visit she decided to come up and live with me and I thought that was going to be a permanent deal and I thought maybe after all I didn't have to look for Miss Wright in Alaska I could just import Miss Wright from California and how cool would that be and um, but she only stayed for two months as well uh, she came up and she just I don't even think she got a job and she was just my kept woman and I think she just got bored out of her mind and wanted some more stuff to do and just went back to California surely out of boredom but um <clears throat> yeah uh, I, I I did really dig her actually but she could never be anything uh, she wasn't you know I mean I don't think we were destined to get married or anything like that even if she had stayed. maybe we would have I don't know I doubt it but <clears throat> you never know 
Anyway, um, what else happened in Alaska? I had my first uh, uh, major car accident that was my fault in Alaska. Um, I was driving with Rhonda. I can't even remember where we were going. We were going out toward the valley, I know that. And we hit some black ice, and my car started to fishtail. And um, we went off the bank, and it must have been, I don't know, 10 or 15 feet steep down. And we hit the gully at the bottom, and the car hit nose first, and then bounced up into the air and spun around, and then came down on the ass of the car. And me and Rhonda thankfully had our seatbelts on, so uh, you know it would have been a lot worse. One of us or both of us might have gone through the windshield if we hadn't been strapped in. And uh, Rhonda did seem to have some sort of temporary brain damage from it, but she's obviously fine. But uh, yeah, it was a bit scary there for a while. <clears throat> But yeah, that you know, I I guess that must have been my fault because I was driving, and I never even heard of black ice before. And uh, I just remember, you know, moving from one lane into the other to go, you know, to pass a car that was going like slower than I was, not by much, but just a bit. And um, yeah, then my car started the fishtail just like that. <clears throat> so that was pretty hairy. And one of the other things about Alaska I should mention is the car wrecks. You know, uh, when the snow is thick on the ground, I mean, literally every single day uh, between driving from home to work, I would see someone uh, spin their car into the ditch. And, um, yeah, that, that was always just, just a regular occurrence. And one time I remember in my Jeep, I did like a double 360 uh, coming up towards an intersection when I tried to apply my brakes and hit a bit of ice. But fortunately, um, there was no one else around and my, my Jeep actually recovered facing the correct direction right at the bloody intersection without actually crossing over the line. So it was almost like a stunt. <clears throat> uh, that was a bit weird. Um, one thing's for sure, in Juneau, because of the lack of, um, especially if you go across the channel onto the island of Douglas and you go around the other side of Douglas so you're not even facing the city, um, there's no street lights or, or house lights or any kind of artificial light at all. And the amount of stars on a clear night is unbelievable. Uh, you know, you, you, you sit there looking at them breathless because it's just this smatter of stars that is incomprehensibly thick. Um, and uh, that's one of my favorite things about Alaska is the sky. It's not just a starry sky, it's the sunsets as well. I mean, in the summertime when the days are long and the sun goes down very gradually, you can have like three hour long, four hour long sunsets. It's great, you know. Um, the only thing about Juno that gets you down really is, the, is for me, I'm not really a big fan of snow. You know, I, because partly just because of the driving thing, I just see too many people drive off the road in the snow. And, you know, I had an accident because of black ice. And I think, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a shame that it's just a, a necessary hazard of living in that type of a climate. But uh, from that, that part kind of put the fear into me a little bit, you know. Uh, I didn't really necessarily like that very much, you know, just the, you know, you sort of hope for the best when you drive in the snow. Yeah, that's the way I feel about it anyway. I used to. I haven't driven for a long time now. Anyway, um, what else can I think about Alaska? Um, I took jazz dancing lessons when I lived in Alaska. I took dancing lessons two occasions in my life. In, a, when, in the disco era, when I was a teenager in the late 70s, I took dancing lessons for two summers. And um, in uh, in the 80s, I took dancing lessons with a friend of mine called Julie, and uh, we were dancing partners in his jazz classes for most of 1986. We never uh, went out um, or, or did anything. We fooled around a tiny bit once, but that was about it, really. And uh, I just don't think at that time I don't think I was uh, I was really ready to entertain the idea at that particular moment. Um, but by the time I was ready, there was no one around uh, that I that I really wanted to sort of be with. Anyway, um, yeah. So what else can I think of? There must be more. Uh, when I lived in Alaska, I came back to California one time to visit my mom for her birthday. That was good fun. And um, I also came down in the summer to watch my friend Darlene graduate from high school, and that's when I invited her to come up to stay. For a couple weeks in the summer, which at the time she was excited to do, but by the time she got there, she's like, "This sucks, man! It's raining every day." 
and uh, it was depressing her because the height height of summer and she comes from a really hot town you know uh, where summers are amazing and there's a beach right there blah 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 you know I get it um, California and Alaska are diametrically different places and people who are from California might not mesh with Alaska but for me Juno was absolutely fantastic it was grand and majestic and I, I love the lush greenness of the mountains. I love the starry nights. You know, I wasn't necessarily a fan of the uh, the, the snow, uh, but I don't really mind a lot of rain, and I don't mind uh, cloudy days or dark days or anything like that. Especially because the reward pays off in the summertime so much. Um, and the aurora, man, the aurora. Living someplace where you can see the aurora on a cell, relatively regular basis uh, is all by itself worth doing if you take away nothing else from this video take away this at least once in your life see the aurora in person for yourself there's nothing like it all right I want to thank you for watching this video and um, until next time may all your ups and downs be ups